All right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling Podcast. And here's an update on the giveaway leading up to our 200th episode, which, by the way, is like next week. I am so excited. I cannot believe like this journey has been just amazing. And I've met so many amazing people. You have no yeah. idea the magnitude and the, the, the power of a podcast, right? Um, just learning things, sharing stories, bringing really cool people, um, events to you, um, all the coaching tips that I put on there. So you can literally go back and follow on Instagram or go back to the podcast. Every third one is a coaching episode. Did you know that? So there's a lot of good cycling tips that I put out there for you to get into your training. Cause if you go back last year, this time I'm talking all about, um, you know, just online training, getting into the spring, things like that. And I'm always looking for new ideas. So please share with me. So here's a little recap of what we've done. We've, we're leading, we've got six weeks been, been going on. So the first one was we had a gift certificate from one less bike, one less car shop in the UK by my friend, Michelle. And then number week two was no gods, no masters cycling cap uh, from Nan, um, or sorry, Millie. And then we had week three, which was a free entry into Barry Roubaix. And I'm still trying to find that person. And if I can't find them, I might just take it myself. Um, last week was the Amped Nitro. So giving away some performance products. This week, guess what? A free coaching call with me. You can talk about anything cycling, fitness, nutrition related, or maybe if you as a woman over 40, and that's who I work with, um, you know, maybe fitting menopause and scheduling and organizing, getting things into your day, like maybe that might be something you want to chat about. Um, next week is leading up to, we're going to have a, you can, so for your reviews, remember, I pick the winners from review, so make sure you get your review in. Um, a lucky winner is going to be winning a $50 Amazon gift card. I know I said 25, but I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to put $50 out there and we have a couple other prizes that I'm um, waiting for some confirmation. So don't forget to like, follow, share the Instagram page, share the podcasts, um, and please go in and write your review. That is so appreciative and it really does help the podcast a whole lot um, with regards to getting it out to more people um, in their feeds. So with that, enjoy the next episodes and um, I just look forward to picking you as a winner uh, next week. Take care. Bye. And as a side note, I forgot to mention that if you go to my free download page, which is www.askcoachsylvie.com, I have at least five free downloads there that are cycling related. And the last one I put out there was um, four cycling snacks that you can make at home for long rides or even training. I've been using a lot of these snacks uh, just uh, for long training rides or maybe quick training rides after supper or during supper. So go and check that out and download them. I will be, I'm testing out more snacks now and I'm going to make another one. So uh, we'll have lots of things there for you as freebies. So keep your eye on that page. All right. Remember, askcoachsylvie.com. Go get your freebies. Welcome back for another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling Podcast with your host, Sylvie Dew, sitting here in Chelsea, Quebec, Canada. And my guest today is Doobie, I didn't even ask, Doobie Chris. Chris? Yes. Curious. Ah, curious. <laughs> All right. Excellent. And I believe he is sitting in New Jersey. No, actually, I'm from New Jersey. I'm actually sitting in uh, Minneapolis. Oh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. All right. Yeah, Perfect. Minnetonka, a little little uh, west of Minneapolis. Perfect. But he is from Jersey, like I mentioned. And so he is a specialized teacher of kids for hearing loss. And he's also the creator of some triathlons. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because uh, this 
this might not be happening. It is not happening during my January um, cycling event series, but we are still going to be talking about events because they're an important part of cycling. And this is actually the first triathlon that I've talked about, I believe. And so I'm super excited to uh, bring Doobie to talk about the Hopkins Royal Tri. So that's in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. and, and the new one for Women's Tri. So we're really going to be focusing on that one because it's new as of last year. And so Doobie, thank you for coming in. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. I always like to get started with asking you, like, how did you get started in cycling and how did it segue into um, the event, taking sure. over events or starting yeah. events, I should say? Well, like most people, we I started riding a, a bike as a kid. Um, you, you know, as a kid, you use it as basic transportation. And then I, I tell people, especially now in this part of my life, somewhere over time, we went away from it you know, we used to love riding bikes. We go all over and then we have a you banana know, seat bike too. Oh yes. <laughs> we need to start yeah. a club. <laughs> it's, I think they should bring them back. They were awesome. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's things like that. Um, we all started it. And then somewhere along the way, I'm, I'm guilty of it. Um, I, I stopped riding my bike. Um, you know, I, I wasn't a big uh, proponent uh, of wearing helmets. I used to think, it, you know, I was like, that's odd. Look at that. They're like, you're, you're a grown man. You shouldn't be wearing a helmet. You know, and years later, I'm like, okay, you fall off a couple bikes or you have a couple close calls or you just understand the safety behind it. But as far as just riding bikes, I got back into it. Um, you know, uh, and the bike I started riding on was a big old heavy version of the one I had as a kid. And that's, I think, what, what happens is, um, you, you know, you don't have uh, quality equipment or it's heavier, it's cumbersome, things like that. And you, you don't quite enjoy it as much. And, um, you know, really, the reason I got back into biking was probably more so because of doing my first triathlon. And uh, being a guy and being stubborn and, um, you know, just thinking, I'm like, you know what, I'll take any old bike. And I did, but it, it, I was able to use it, but it wasn't feeling comfortable. And, um, you know, but I was appreciative to, you know, to try it out. It was very humbling. And that's how I kind of got back into it was, was doing triathlons. And I used um, my neighbor's old uh, Fuji. It was like from the 1980s. He's a lot larger than I am. He's like, you know, four inches taller. And, um, but he gave it to me and I was appreciative that I, I had a bike that I could use. And so um, I did my first triathlon on that. And then I eventually went and, um, you know, did it for a few more years. And my wife was finally like, don't you want to get a different bike? Now we'll tell you the happy ending to the story is I still have that, that bike. It's a constant reminder of where I started from. And that um, when I do events, um, I do take that bike out a lot because I want to show the new people as like it's it, it is nice to have a really, really good bike, but you can do it on um, what you have and you should be appreciative of what you do have. And when you have the time, interest and money to, you know, maybe upgrade, you know, think about it because it does make for a lot more enjoyable experience. Yeah, the the operative the operative word is money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and this is kind of what you should start with as an entry level bike. Yeah, that's that just blows my mind. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I tell them I'm like, anytime I go shopping with somebody, I'm like, so what's your budget? Um, mm -hmm. You might want to add like a, thousand a couple bucks. zeros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just actually had a conversation uh, with a uh, the owner of a local tri shop and ski shop, things like that. And we were talking about that, and she said, "Yeah, I have a tough time. You know, when people come out, I said, I, you know, to get you a decent bike, it's it's going to cost some money. You know, that's a, probably a whole other uh, subject and podcast I know. of just you know because of that. But you know, it is the truth behind it. Um, you know, there there's a lot more." um bells and whistles uh literally the, even the bells are are cooler and more expensive than I was like you know than when we were kids but it's one of those ones that it's it's nice to see that um the important thing is that biking is coming back as or staying as a yeah. very uh, healthy lifestyle activity that really is for for just about anybody out there I've got a 60 uh, year old cousin with uh, developmental delays we got her a three-wheeled bike 
and she loves just pedaling up and down the street with it. And uh, that's something that she can do. Yeah, I know. And uh, I mean, and we, and we don't even have to talk about tri bikes, which are even more ridiculous mm-hmm. than Rosebud. <laughs> Bikes. So let's talk about how you got into starting first the Royal Hopkins try because because mm-hmm. that's been a running for a number of years, right? Yeah, we started in 2014. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit impulsive, I get a little, a, a lot, not a little, I have a lot of ADHD. <laughs> so when, and that's what it really comes down to is when the idea pops in my head, I'm like, yes, I'm like all into it. Uh, so yeah, it was probably about 2012, uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, I was on the beach. Um, I had met up with some other people that were, you know, triathletes and, um, I don't even know if I really knew them at the time. And we just, you know, connected and we had a conversation about like, like, why isn't there a triathlon like around here? This would be like a great place, you know, to do a triathlon <laughs> and you know, we all started turning. I'm like, you know, like, yes, it's like, you know, it, this would be a great idea. So I happened to be in an event where the, uh, the mayor of the town was there, the police chief, the fire chief was there, other people in the community uh, from the rec department. And I just went around from table to table. I was like, hey, what do you think about the idea of a triathlon here in, you know, in Hopkins? They're like, oh, yeah, I like that. So uh, as I was building you know, momentum for it and planning it out, um, that was... Um, you know, it was probably, yeah, probably closer to, it was late 2012, so it was almost 2013, and, and I was like, I'm not quite ready yet, I want to do a good job, and I don't think, you know, we're going to have enough time to get this implemented in 2013, so somehow, probably because I listened to my wife, she's like, all right, let's put the reins on this, think about it, you know, <laughs> and, you know, the whole measure twice, cut once idea, and so we did, we waited to the next year, um, we were able to roll it out. We had a lot of interest in it. And then it came down to having to deliver, you know, cause it's one thing to get people excited about it, but then when they show up, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, so that was the kind of the catalyst for it was, you know, that this starts with a concept and I'm the kind of person that like, yes, so it's like, let's get an idea going and let's give it a try. And so I was willing to take a try, um, at, at going at it. Wow. So you waited a year and then you've got all the, everything in place because a tri- triathlon is not just like a road race because I, I organize exactly. a road race and I pick the easiest one, which is a time trial. Mm-hmm. I don't have to yeah. deal with Pelotons. It's like one person out at a time. And then they, you know, <laughs> and so I'm like, that's an easy event to organize. But triathlons, you have the whole um you know, of, transition area, yeah transition area the run the bike the swim um safety factors like it's a huge ordeal and um, well it is because it's like you said it's three events not only yeah. just you, you're participating they're going on you know you have people that are out you know coming back on the run while a group is going out in the water um coming in and out on the bike so literally it's a lot of moving parts and um both for, you know, the participants, you know, it's like we do training uh, classes for new people. And I'm like, all right, this is the difference. I said, you need to, you know, do all these events in the same day and probably in the same two to three hour time period, plus your clothing, um, you know, things like that. It's just different mentality. That's what, you know, you get to think about. It's not just, you're just going out there like, I'm going to do a 5k race. And when I get done, that's it. You know, yeah. you, you will have done different things. But when, as a uh, pr- or organizer of an event, you have to organize three different events and make sure that the different groups are talking to each other. Safety is paramount. Um, you know, I, I can't go watch the run knowing that, you know, or watch the person come across the finish line knowing that there's still people out in the water. You know, we have to think about things like that. So um, yeah, definitely it's, it weighs on you. You know, I, well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a really good sleeper until the week of because I'm worried <laughs> that I either forgot to you know pull a permit or <laughs> order enough fruit or um uh, yeah, you know yeah. why like why is everybody still out in the lake and then I realized like no I was dreaming it but it's it's things like that that you know um, definitely weigh on you and um, I, the good news is we get a lot of compliments from people um usually people who have organized things in the past they're like you know what I know what you go through and I, I just really appreciate it. And I'm like, well, thank you. Um, it's, you know, but still at the end of the day, I'm responsible for all those people and, uh, it's a good feeling, but it can be nerve wracking. I totally agree. It's just like, 
the list, the mm -hmm. check marks, the double check, the give, <laughs> making sure everybody's ready. Um, so in your Hopkins event, is it just one event or do you have multiple events happening like like a try a try Olympic, like, do you have different mm. levels or is it just, okay. So it's a multi. No, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. The, uh, we start off with, um, the idea of a sprint, uh, distance, which is, um, as you probably know, or may not, uh, there's different, you know, different swim lengths, different bike lengths, um, and different run. Well, usually a run is usually pretty consistent to a 5k, whereas the, um, some of the other ones, it, it it's pretty consistent. If you do an Olympic or, uh, half or a full Ironman distance. They're pretty con consistent on the distances. Uh, the really unique thing about our events is that we offered, we went backwards instead of building up to an Olympic or a half, we went backwards and we did a mini sprint, super sprint, um, oh. you know, think glorified kids sprint, we, we, we like to call it. Um, oh, nice. And I actually had some people question that. They're like, well, that's not really, you know, that's not, I don't know if you think uh, professional or, um, you know, competitive. And I was like, well, true. I said, but not everybody's in it to win. In fact, the majority of people aren't. Um, and I said, I'd like to have an entry point for people. And here's the really unique thing. It's not just that we have a mini sprint. Um, and this is probably one of the only ones I've ever seen. I have not seen anybody else do this before and feel free if any other people want to, it's not like some trade secret I've got. I think it should be used universally. We do a mix and match. Um, it's, we call it like a tri buffet. You get to pick <laughs> what you want to do for distances on the day of the race for the mini sprint. I had a uh, person, a uh, friend of mine who, uh, when I pitched the idea to him, he's a runner. And he, uh, he said, yeah, you know, I'd be interested. I think, uh, you know, I think he had done a triathlon before. He goes, but wouldn't it be great if you could, like, you know, uh, pick uh, uh, the distance you want to go for this mini sprint? And I was like, well, how would you get to do that? And so what we did was we tell people on race day, you can either do the short swim or the long swim. You can do the short bike or the long bike or for the run, the short or the long. And so what we did was we gave starting points of um a hundred yard swim a five mile bike ride or a one and a half mile run walk as opposed to a uh, um, 750 yard swim a uh, 13 mile bike or a full 5k run so what we do is people you know they get a timing chip so they know exactly what their time was um, they're not even ranked. We just put it down in alphabetical order when they finish. So you get your individualized, you know, times and it tells you what, what you did, but people get to pick. And we found that out of the hundred spots that we reserve for this mini sprint, probably about two to three people, usually from my swim group, do the long swim. 95 to 97 know, like of them. Yeah, they're like, you might as well be doing the English Channel. If you, if you, you know, anything longer than, you know, uh, uh, like 100 yards, the... <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, you start thinking, you're like, how far could someone drop me in the lake that I feel safely I can make it back to shore? Yeah, that's to the, true. the, the, the um, you know, the, the buoys. I'm yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I was right to the end of the swimming zone and back. And, and then, yeah, and bring it back in. That's what <laughs> yeah. it is. So we only get a few people that do the long swim, but the majority of them do the the uh, the short swim, and that's okay. Uh, then we have probably about a third of the group does the long bike, and we found out half the people actually do the full five k because most people by that point they're like, all right, I know what I'm in. You know, in the swim, you have no idea how much energy you expend. On a 5K. Okay, you can do this on the day of. The day like, of, you just pick. You, oh, okay. So, okay. So if I am a person mm -hmm. who wants to go and I'm going to, I'm going to register for this event. So this is the buffet try. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm definitely going to do the shorter swim. And then once I get out of the water, I can opt to do the longer bike or the shorter bike. Yep. Yeah. And then once I'm done that, I can go like, okay, I can either do the longer run or the shorter run. Yeah. Usually people get to the turnaround point and they're like, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good. Like what's the worst that happens? I walk the last mile. And so they do. And you know what the best part about not signing up in advance to pick is we usually get at least one or two people every year that sign up 
and then they actually do the training and come race day, they're like, you know what? I'm going to try that long swim. I'm going to try the long bike. And then when they get to that run, and then essentially they did a five or a full uh, sprint triathlon and never had the pressure because no one was any of the wiser except for them. So that's why we do it was because we wanted people. It's really I, cool. There were so many times when I would go to events, I'm like, I'd see people I'm like, okay, you have running shoes on, you're on a bike. You know, and they're like, uh, you know, I, I, I got, I've got a knee problem. I can't run. I was like, all right, well, let's make it short. Um, and they're like, well, you know, I really have a tough time with the swim. I was like, what if it's a short swim? It was funny because the swim, that was a big one. When I was I told like, people, yeah, short swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Because my <laughs> swim group, their, you know, their idea of a short swim is at least a mile. And I was like, oh, yeah, God, not everybody. You know, like... So that's the idea behind it was because we wanted people to have an entry point and into getting into it. And as I was talking to people, I found very quickly a hundred yards was like the sweet spot. I was like, you know, like a hundred yards. So like where, like from here to that tree, like a football field. And you could see people with their arms are like, and then the magic words came out that I wanted to hear. I can do it. And that's all it is. Um, we want people to have the, the mindset that they can do it. I really, yeah, so really like that idea, Doobie. And you know what? Um, I have a good friend who does the Somersault Triathlon series here in our region. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you, they have multi events going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, I'm going to connect you guys because this would be. Yeah, feel free. Really... Whoever's listening in and watching it, that's the idea is this is, this should not be because this is a safety one. Uh, we have zero people every year. Uh, that get pulled out from our swim because we put them in a position that they're safe to begin with. And, you know, we do other things too. Like we offer swim angels. Um, they're people from my swim groups that um, they love swimming and they go out there and they swim side by side, uh, nervous or new swimmers. And they help just coach them through. They're like, okay, we're going to, you know, you're going off to the right. Let's bring it back. Let's breathe. And we have good experiences. And I think it's because some of these, these, you know, ideas that we've implemented. Huh. That is really cool. I like that idea. I might even try another one. See, oh, that's, no. that was the idea behind it was, you know, <laughs> totally. it's, it's, if anybody who wants to do a triathlon, um, <laughs> but is afraid to, you, because I've seen a lot of uh, so-called mini sprints or super sprint triathlons, and it's still a, almost like a quarter mile swim. And, and yeah, I mean, I do that. I warm up with that distance. Like when I go, oh, do my it's, it does. And that's so scary. we, and, you know, we put people a lot of times in chest deep water and, and we have people around and, and, you know, things like that. But the bottom line is when they do the, the sprint or the mini sprint for us, we all start off in the same spot. We all cross the same finish line. There's no, you know, you're not relegated to the kids table. It's the, everybody's welcome. Ironically, the one thing we have to be careful about is uh, because our distances are so inviting and friendly, we have a lot of parents um, of children that they're like, oh, my kid can swim a hundred yards. I was like, I, I know your five-year-old can swim a hundred yards, but keep in mind, there's probably gonna be a 300 pound man like barreling down a hill at 30 miles an hour. And this isn't a kid's race. We do get a lot of, of uh, you know, uh, young teens and adolescents that participate. But I do just warn them. I said, just know that this event was designed for adults who are just nervous about, you know, participating. And, you know, and that's not even before they get into their spandex uh, Lycra clothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother, <laughs> you oh, know, I know. Uh, issue. It's yeah. like, <laughs> But yeah, cause yeah, I, I tried a couple of triathlons and, um, at first I, I don't like swimming. It's not my <laughs> thing. I'm a cyclist, right? The cycling coach. And so, but my first triathlon, they boated us out into the St. Lawrence. And I don't know if you're a St. Lawrence, it's a main channel. Mm -hmm. And dumped you off. The, and... Huh? Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've seen that before. In the middle, and, and we have to swim this way and the current is going this way. So where we start, you're like, like yeah. you're floating farther away and I'm just like freaking out. And like, honestly, I was probably one of the last people out of the water. Like, I'm just like, I hate that. <laughs> and, but luckily I was really good on the bike and I made up a ton of spots. A lot of people do. Now here's a good story for you. 
my <laughs> wife, uh, she, I, you know, like I said, I love promoting what I'm into. Most people, you know, like that. They, you know, you get excited yeah. about something. So I started telling my friends, like, you need to do triathlons. I told my wife, you know, she didn't do it the first year, but the next year she's like, okay. So she literally was the last person out of the water. Um, she, and she got out and, uh, she got on her bike, pa- passed a bunch of, yeah, exactly. After she, you know, got together and, um, and then she got on a run and that's what I told her, you know? And so whenever we do stories, um, or not stories, but we share stories, um, at training sessions or classes and I'll say, okay, tell me what your fears are. And people are like, uh, I'm, I'm afraid of embarrassing myself. I'm afraid of coming in last. And so I told them, I was like, I married the person who came in last out of the swim. I was like, so <laughs> there's hope. I was like, you know, it's not where you, it's not where you finish. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the fact that you step up to the starting line is the idea that you should have. It's like, I showed up. <laughs> um, well, half you know, the battle is getting there, right? Yeah. Like you do all this training and I've seen people pull out the last minute because, you know, they're, they're trained, they're this, they're, they're their thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, uh, you know, I, I think I've got a cold yeah. or, uh, Oh, you start telling I, yourself I, things like that. I yeah. pulled my something, my foot, <laughs> you know, I'm like, really like get out there. Well, that's the other <laughs> one that we get towards the end of the summer. As we get closer to the event, I like to send out an email message about two weeks beforehand. And I'm like, all right, listen, let's be honest. If the closest you came to a body of water this summer was your bathtub, you may want to think about dropping down to the mini sprint. And I have, oh, a good handful of people every, they're like, yeah, yep, that's me. They're like, let's just save you, your life. That is really great foresight, actually, Doobie. It is. Like, hey, to all those who've registered, if you have. Well, a lot of times, you know, I don't know what kind of audience you have here, but think about it. Like a lot of this happens um, right after, there's usually drinking involved when someone signs up for this. They're like, it's New Year's Eve. Oh my God, yes. Right? Fourth of July. They're like, hey, uh... you know, uh, come on now. I think like you and I should do a a triathlon. And they're like, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. And then you realize like months later, like, what did I sign up for? And that's what we're looking for is we want to give people an opportunity to participate, but be successful. And, you know, my, my insurance company, they very much appreciate a lot of the tactics that we in, 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 oh, involve in this. That's right. Well, think about two years ago with uh, when the pandemic hit, um, a lot of events were canceling. And one of the things was my insurance guy goes, I'm not quite sure I want you to send a bunch of people into a lake and they haven't been swimming in a few months. I'm like, good point. I was like, there you go. I was like, I don't know if I want to send a bunch of people. So we want to get people in it that want to be a part of it. And if they do, we want to figure out a way to make it happen for them so that they can be successful. We're not talking about getting them onto the podium or coming in first, but if they want to get to the finish line, uh, you know, I think we've got ways to make that happen. Yeah. I was, I was just thinking of something, but now I totally lost my train of thought, but oh yeah. And it saves you from having everybody switch on the day. Don't you freaking hate that? Exactly. Well, yeah, because everybody's <laughs> like, you know, thinking about, it. so we do, we try, you know, you can't always, um, you know, predict it, but I always tell people, it's like, with whatever the event is, I was just like, let me you, know, I'll switch you right now. <laughs> yeah, we, we can switch it. We can, you know, if you forget something, people are panicking. Uh, we even do practice rides, um, you know, think, just so people know where they're going, what the terrain is like. Get lots of people from out of state. Yeah, we actually usually get about uh, 10 or 12 different states represented. Oh, very uh, cool. Yeah, we've had people come. You know, it all depends. Usually it's because someone knows somebody. I don't think we have a, a nationwide recognition. But I do think we have a lot of um, word of mouth recognition. People are like, hey, like, have you thought about doing that? And, you know, this is another one. That's, it's great. This bridges the connection between um, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, father, daughter, you know, in terms of participation, um, they can both participate or multiple people can participate from the same group, regardless of their level of uh, fitness or experience. So we get a lot of people where maybe the, the mom signs up for the sprint, the child signs up for, or the husband or whomever signs up for the mini, um, and, and they can both go to the event together and know that they're not going to two separate events they just happen to be participating at different levels so we get a lot of that where they they um sign up together 
and they're just doing different uh, events and they can do it. You know, um, they're like, oh, I don't have to do an Ironman, you know, at the same level as my spouse or my child. I can just go to the event and do something like that. And which is funny because when they get to the, if they do that mini sprint, remember I told you there's no placing and uh, it's just a, it just tells you what your times were. And I get a lot of people that are like, yeah, I don't care about my times. I don't, you know, whatever, until they get their printout at yeah. the end. And, and also they'll look over like, hey, like, how are you faster? Like I was faster on this. And, and then we'll <laughs> start turning to like, you know, like if I had some of those really cool shoelaces that are elastic, I wouldn't have to tie my shoes. I could probably save some time, you know? And I like, you just told me you weren't competitive, but when you're, you know, your child, your spouse, your neighbor, your coworker did the same event, your, your mind starts thinking about it. I'm like, and that's great. Cause that's the friendly competition that we want. If someone's thinking about how can you improve and have a good time at the same, you know, opportunity. How many people do you, how many people can participate for the whole day? Like in total, how many? Oh, how we, many we, ca we cap our field at uh, 450 people. Um, okay. Yeah. Just, we, we don't have any more space um, on our course and uh, transition areas and parking and things like that. So we do it to be respectful to the people that sign up. Um, we want to, don't want to give them the impression that we're uh, overcrowding our uh, capacity, but uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a probably a mid-size event um, of about 450 people with about 100 or so that do the, the mini sprint option. Hey friends, we're going to take a quick break and I'm going to tell you about a workshop for indoor cyclers, Peloton riders, Swift riders, outdoor cyclist that is so revolutionary you'll wonder why you've never heard about it. So we all know that improving your cycling skills whether inside or outside is important but how do we know what we need to train and how to get started? Let me just add that this workshop like I mentioned is perfect for indoor cycling and anybody who rides on the peloton. So the good news is that there is a lot of ways to improve your cycling skills. You could take a class or hire a coach, follow a friend, or continue struggling year after year. But these options can be expensive and time consuming. The solution? I have created an online cycling skills workshop for female cyclists. It's a safe environment where I go over the four essential skills that I have identified identified as a cycling coach, working and coaching over 900 women in the past 14 years, building confidence as cyclists. So here they are. The four areas are pedal stroke efficiency, hill climbing, straight training, and speed with an added bonus on nutrition. This workshop will cover these essential skills in four one hour sessions, where I will explain demonstrate and have you practice the skill. At the end of each workshop, homework in the way of drills will be handed out for you to practice. It's the fastest and easiest way to get all the essential cycling skills that you can apply immediately, either online or outside on the road. The recordings are also available. As an additional bonus, you will have access to weekly live strength training workouts and yoga. In just four weeks, guaranteed, this workshop can turn or any cyclist into a better rider, no matter what their skill level bike they're sitting on. So how do you register? You go to cyclingskillspro.com and register for one of our monthly workshops. I look forward to sharing my cycling skills and tips to help make you a more skilled, confident cyclist on the road on your Peloton, on Swift, or indoor trainer. See you there and see you online. I like that. I really like that idea. I'm going to talk to my friend about that. So let's talk about the uh, four women try and how that sure. came about. Yep. Yeah. So the four women triathlon, a lot, a lot of the same things uh, that we did in the Hopkins Royal Triathlon take place there. The biggest difference is, as the name implies, uh, the number four and women is that it's it was intended for, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, those that identify as women. Uh, we leave it up to the individuals to decide, but it's basically it's an all women's event. Um, 
it's being organized by four women that are important in my life, my wife and my three daughters. Um, over the years, they've all participated uh, and helped, uh, you know, put on some of my events uh, for triathlons. Um, and actually, you know, they did start a lot, uh, at least my daughters with the uh, mini sprint uh, at our Hopkins triathlon. But we had a, a request uh, from another community that loved what we were doing. And uh, they had a couple of uh, our participants were on their you know, board and they asked me about bringing an event to their community. And I pitched the idea of, of doing a, an all women's event. Uh, we have another very well established one in the state of Minnesota. And this was not intended at all to be some sort of competition for them. It was supposed to be um, a, an opportunity for another event that uh, their participants could do uh, because the more I talk to people over the years, as much as people think I don't listen and I do a lot more talking, um, is that I did hear a lot of repetition of the idea when I would pitch um, our Hopkins triathlon, a lot of women would say, oh, is it a women's only event? And I just started thinking about it. It's like, you know what, there seems to be a lot of interest. And I think one of the bigger reasons is, is that um, it's real easy for just about anybody to get intimidated um, when you go, whether you're, you know, you're an experienced person or just a new person, especially, but it's really intimidating and overwhelming. What did you get yourself into? And I, I do hear that a lot from women too, where they just, um, if kind of the message I was getting was that it was just, some of the events were just too competitive, um, not friendly, not welcoming. And that's the mission of the events that I do, um, is to make it inclusive, make it welcoming, uh, make it friendly, make it appealing, make it cost affordable. Um, and I have no problem with uh, kind of the, the high end or top end athletes or people that can afford um, the $10,000 bike, you know, they're more than welcome to participate, but this event and all my events were designed for the average person that just wants to be healthy. You know, that's what it really comes down to. I tell people swim, biking and running are three events that we all learned how to, or activities we learned how to do as kids. And somewhere it went by the wayside. We said, we told ourselves we're not good at it. It's tough. It's work. It's not enjoyable. And I want, I want to make that fun again. And I want to make being healthy uh, something that everybody can do that, that wants to, you know, uh, work towards a healthy lifestyle. And I think that's what something that triathlon can do. But like I said, it can be overwhelming. So the four women event came around because I thought that there was a need for it. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to uh, get my wife and three daughters involved in something that they could really wrap their, their uh, heads and minds around and say, yes, this is something I believe in is I want to support uh, the opportunities uh, for, for other women. And so, yeah, so we did it last year. Uh, same thing, you know, going through those growing pains of uh, connecting with um, uh, different communities, different entities, um, you know, it was easy with the Hopkins Royal, Royal Triathlon because that's in my, my hometown, you know, um, so I, I drive by the course all the time. I swim in that lake. I know the people, um, things like that. Uh, this started testing me and, you know, I was like, okay, um, I'm, I don't live in this new city that we're going to work in. Um, I, I don't, I don't even live in that county. It's, it's different things like that. And so I had to take a chance myself and knew that going into it, I may uh, have a few doors closed on me. I may have to explain things a little bit better or more clearly. Um, you know, we didn't want to kind of give the impression we were a modern day circus that's just coming into town that, you know, we want to take, take, take. Um, we've donated over $50,000 uh, in our first few years with the Hopkins Triathlon back into the community. Um, into the scholarship funds for the rec department, back to the, the, the youth groups that volunteer. So we wanted to tell people that's what we're doing is we're, we're investing in the community by putting it back into the community. And it's, it was easier in my hometown because I knew that if anything went wrong, I was going to hear about it. Now I had to, I had to tell um, other communities that, you know, I know I don't live in your community, but I want you to know that I'm going to treat it as if I I'm going to run this event as if I do live in your community because it's, it's just good for, you know, it's just good to, to be, have that mentality. Are you very far from there? No, uh, probably about 10, maybe 15 miles. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't that far, but, um, 
you know, it's, it's still one of those ones where it's, it's not some place that I normally um, pass through. Um, it's a wonderful community, but that's the idea is, and I, I can understand why some places get a little protected of their community because they want to make sure that it's being done with uh, good intentions. And that's, that's kind of, like I said, that's what our big mantra is, you know, um, do good in the, in the, in the communities, because it's going to come back. Um, you know, that's the message we want to send out is that when we do something, we, we have a good reputation. And, uh, and this is important too, because uh, I'm a male, you know, for this, this women's triathlon, you know, I need to, to show the women that would be participating that, um, you know, uh, I cannot understand everything that they're going through and that, uh, you know, educate <laughs> me and uh, yeah. know that, you know, I am not out to make a profit off of you. I'm out because I think that uh, this is something that there's a need. And I think that this is something that um, I can use some of my experience to help make it happen. And that uh, I want to be uh, an example uh, for my own daughters and my wife uh, to show that they, you know, we can, we can do this together. And that, you know, that's the only difference, like I said, about the, with the women's triathlon. Um, but I did need to know or accept that, you know, um, yeah, this could, this could be misconstrued or this could be taken the wrong way if I was to come in and say, well, yeah, I'm going to tell everybody what to do. I said, I, I want to get feedback and tell me, what is it you like? What is it you want to see? You know, what things can I uh, change how I, how I do what I'm doing? Didn't they, did they not invite you to come in and do an event in their community? Which ones that the, the other, t no, no, it's just um, in general, whenever, you know, because uh, I, I talked to the original um, city that uh, asked me to come out and talk to their chamber of commerce and their city council and their public works was just like, ah, I don't know if we really want to. Oh, it's something. just like, ah, uh, what about and the I'm like, safety? And I told them, I was like, like, yeah, I, I like, I, this wasn't my idea. <laughs> like, you, you know, someone asked me to come in. But by that point, the idea had already started, you know, brewing in my head. And I was like, you know what? Yes, I think we can do this. We just need to find um, uh, a venue and a community that is open to the idea and uh, is willing to take a chance on it, you know, because you are, you're inconveniencing um, the, uh, you know, the public works or the, I wouldn't say the city council, but like, you know, the administrative offices, you know, to, to go in there, um, you know, and even everything the, up for you and the barricades and exactly and even the people that. Uh, that live in those neighborhoods that you're going through, uh, you know, they, they not to say they don't care, but the, when they wake up in the morning on that Saturday of the event and they're like, well, okay, why is traffic stopped? Why are all these people running by? Is someone <laughs> going to pick up that garbage that's left there? You know, it's one of those ones. I mean, that's tough because you, you can't talk to each individual, you know, person that lives there. So you have to set up the reputation um, that, hey, this event came in and it's as if we never even noticed they were here because it happened. Uh, we came out, we cheered them on, we, you know, waved to them. And then when they left, they cleaned up and they, you know, they didn't inconvenience us. So that's, you know, some of those things are coming into it. And like I said, then you add on the extra thing where it's an all women's event. Um, you know, I want to be respectful to all the women that were there and in the language we use, the, uh, the messages we send to, to say that, um, you know, uh, we value and welcome all that, you know, come out. So you found a place and where is your woman for a woman try? Sure. So the four women try, uh, we held it last year in Chanhassen, Minnesota at uh, Lake Ann. So um, it was kind of, yeah, kind of fitting, uh, you know, the name <laughs> of the location. So uh, yeah, so it's not, not too far from where I live. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it turned out to be a very good location. People were pretty happy with it. Same thing. Uh, we good heard good reviews. Yeah. Good reviews. Feedback. People were, you know, they liked, um, yeah, the, the lake itself. A lot of people go there to go swimming, which is yeah. always a plus that, you know, that's where they like to go because they, you know, when, when you go into, um, an open body of water, it's not like you, you know, you have, sometimes you don't know what's going to be in that water in terms of wildlife or just, um, you know, uh, just other things that go, you know, related to open water as opposed to a, a chlorinated indoor pool, you know? So, uh, yeah, so that was nice. That's and, my and, thing. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm don't with you think too. about the darkness. Don't <laughs> yeah. In your mind, you're like, what was that just? Oh yeah. Or, it's like, woo -woo. you know, it's not possible, I, but your mind thinks otherwise. I know. I know. Cause I, I live right on a, a river and my daughter wants to start swimming. So I'm like, okay, let's get those floaties, those, um, eye flows so that, um, mm -hmm. you know, we can attach into it each other we can see each other and if we happen to get tired we can hold on to them because mm -hmm. like she wants to swim and i'm like <laughs> okay this will cause soften my anxiety about going into the water and, and maybe i can like really start embracing the water like mm -hmm. you know a little bit more than just jumping off the dock but uh <laughs> no, and I always put, yeah, I was gonna say I, I I hear exactly what you're saying that that crosses the minds of of most people because like you said you're you're more of a uh, a cyclist by nature and yeah. passion right so that's what it comes you know down to is uh, you know you're moving outside your comfort zone I'm sure on a bike you probably are used to you know riding on uh, yeah, it doesn't roads, matter what I'm riding on I'm yeah like, you're, ah, you know the cars are whipping by and you're like oh it's not a big deal and then the person who's not used to riding on a bike is like you know oh my gosh so like I you know can I ride up on the sidewalk I'm like you could but it's like let's we're safe we're allowed <laughs> <laughs> and so same same idea is uh, I mean I think running for the most part, most, nobody's ever seems to be too scared of the run, you know, unless there's a hill or something like that. But when it comes to swimming and biking, it's, it's pushing people outside their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And you just have to come up with ways that we're like, well, you know what? I, I know you, you know, your, your legs are probably a little sore or you're a little nervous about being in my cars. We'll just keep practicing it. And that's the idea is to, you know, um, get people opportunities to practice it. We do a lot of that with both our events. We do um, uh, previews of the bike and the run course. Uh, we do little, you know, lessons where, you know, people can uh, sign up for a class and each week we work on a little bit. I'm not training them. I'm just giving them tips about, you know, um, hey, let's think about not eating uh, like a, a hamburger right before you go out on a run. Like you don't need it. Like, you know, here's this <laughs> thing called like a little energy gel, you know, and you can take that then you won't get the side stitches and some of them are you know i tell you it's funny because you'll appreciate it so. or you can go out and try and see how it happens how it goes. Yeah, yeah yeah and see how that works <laughs> yeah how that works for you <laughs> but if you can do it ahead of time and that's what a lot of it is um because you know like with the bikes bikes really if if you pay up enough you can get a really nice smooth moving bike if it's mm -hmm. but i tell people like get a bike that works and a bike that fits you. I said, that's a good starting point. I said, or instead of spending all the money on a bike right away, maybe get those elastic laces for $10 or one of those little um, race belts for $10. I said, you'll look cool. I said, but they're actually functional. I said, you won't be fumbling around trying to pin your number on or tie your shoelaces. And so we'll do that. We'll practice with people ahead of time and give them some, you know, some tips that, are uh, just very user friendly, uh, very easy to get into, and they can try it out. Doobie, do you have like pre, like little workshops or clinics for people to sign up for ahead of time to learn certain things like transitioning, like mm -hmm. learn how to set up your transition zone, both of them? You know? Yeah, oh, exactly. And that's well, so we'll do things like that. We uh, finally for started summer? using a little. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, leading up to it, we connected or partnered with the local rec department to offer a uh, class, uh, like I said, five weeks. Uh, first one is like, okay, let's talk about how'd you get signed up for this and what are your fears and <laughs> what are your goals? Um, Where is your buddy? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, and usually, around. yeah, some, and there's a lot of pa partners that sign up with that one. So like, uh, this one's got me signed up for it. So that's part of it. And then, like I said, each week we just work on the, the swim, the bike, the run, uh, just getting people comfortable. And then the last week we do a, um, essentially the mini triathlon course. Um, and it's applicable to anybody. Really? So the yeah. idea is I told him, I said, in, in theory, you should not be collapsing at the finish line of a mini triathlon. I said, it's, 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 it's not that part. It's the frustration part because, you know, your shoelaces came undone. Your tires were flat. You didn't know where the venue was. I said, by doing this, you're trying it out ahead of time. And now you have a week or two before the actual event and you'll feel really good. You, you, you know, you're probably not going to finish in the top 10, but 
you'll feel really good when you finish and you'll actually probably finish better than you would have had you not tried it. So things like that, in my opinion, do help uh, to give people a chance to, to practice some things ahead of time. And we also started doing uh, last year was a sessions like this where we're using technology. I used to offer uh, an opportunity where people could come out in person. And we still do that where they could do a Q, Q and A. Then I started doing a virtual one where I just posted a link. So those people that are coming from 50 miles or uh, the other side of the country, they can participate in this and ask those questions and say, okay, like, where is the transit? What is this transitionary you talk about? Um, you know, <laughs> oh. where is the, where is the light? So we can ask questions and get some, some things out. And we, we don't have to worry about just having the people come to us. They can do it virtually. So that's actually been a nice uh, thing that we've been able to add on, which really helps people. When, when you know what you're getting into, you feel so much calmer. And when you're calmer, you'll do better. Oh, for sure. Hands on. And let's not even talk about nutrition. <laughs> you yeah. Gotta be, yeah, that's another story. Oh, so, yeah. Like I said, there's whole, I mean, all the things yeah. that, you know, you talk about are uh, big topics and they are, they're very overwhelming. But just the fact of, of you allowing people the opportunity to speak on things like this, I'm sure it resonates with someone else. So like, yes, I, I was thinking that same thing, but I was afraid to ask. And I, I want to be able to give people the opportunity to participate and work through it by asking questions. Uh, yeah, for sure. Because that makes all the difference. Don't go in and start experimenting on race day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah, we, we be tell pretty. people, it's like, <laughs> you know, I know you probably saw some like fitness regimen that like the <laughs> pro athlete. Pro like, level, like, yeah. Don't do that. Or um, some nutritional supplement. Definitely don't take that the day of and do not walk into the store and like buy some clothing that you're like, ah, it looks so cute. And, you know, like, I, I heard it was really good. And then try it out on race day. It's like, just try it out ahead of time. Good things will happen. That's all you're looking for. Not great things. Good things. You want good things to happen. <laughs> I love your attitude. I, I really love it. So let's, let's finish up with the uh, four tries. So how many women are you like, what's your registration level for that? Oh, sure. We, um, uh, we were given a cap of about 300, um, participants. Oh, wow. Uh, That's yeah. still significant. Yeah. Uh, and we had over a hundred our first year. Uh, we were a little, uh, late in getting the word out when we finally got permission. Um, That's and okay. So, first timer. Yeah, I was happy. <laughs> exactly because it's one of, it's manageable and that's what we're looking for but it was you know and, and i'll tell you the best thing that have or helps on race day is good weather you know um i okay. attribute that to my wife i if it's good weather she did it if it was not so much the storm cloud rolls in um you can you know i'll take that one but <laughs> good weather always helps you know especially for the first one and we did we had great weather um so many smiling faces um it was it was really powerful and the best thing was people saying like i, I want to come back next year and do it again and i want to bring others you know oh, so yeah. that, that's great you know you don't so, you don't want them to be the last time like they cross the finish line like i'm done i'm like i, I, I don't want to see you you or <laughs> anybody like <Yeah. laughs> so um uh what was i gonna say oh my gosh um with regards to the women's race, um, shoot, what the hell was I going to ask you? I had a good question. Oh, you're hmm. probably going to ask me if, if you could sign up. No, no. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> you're I like, I am to... sold. I was like, I think I'm going to get back. Yeah, in the no. no, it's you're not. You're going to me a little bit more on that. <laughs> but uh, no, I was going to ask. Um, do you have the same format as your Hopkins, like with all the different levels and the the mini try and everything? So you did yeah. You so we offer we offer a mini one as well. It's a yeah same concept. Uh, concept. That, it, all right. It seemed like it worked really well for our other event, and this one seemed like it would it would go pretty well too. And we did. Uh, it, I think it goes back to that same basic premise. People are nervous about the entry point, and this gives them. Um, a really, really low entry point that they can kind of participate in. That's probably the bigger one. Um, I think some other events uh, or just your typical sprint triathlon, people are like, yeah. And, and 
they get through it, but I don't know if they always have as good of experience because they're struggling because they realize, I mean, I'll tell you what, early in my <laughs> limited career of triathlon, um, I'd sign up and, and then I get out like halfway across the lake and I'm like, oh, I s- like so did not train as much as I should have. And or other times <laughs> where it's like a really hot day and I'm like, wow, I was like, you know, if there was a mini sprint option where I could have just done like a mile and a half run as opposed to like a 5k, I would have loved it. Um, but at that point, you know, and 15 years later, I'm like, all right, I know I can get through it, you know, and it's not a waste your day. But with I'll this one, though, through. You, just to see the smiling faces um, of the people coming across the finish line, uh, it's great. And like I said, because they're coming across together, um, you know, you don't know what distance they've done. And when they come across, everybody's cheering because to everyone that's a spectator, that is the 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 number one finisher, the winner coming. Every every person that comes to that finish line is a you know um, is a winner in their minds. And that's what the the feeling we want to get is that you know thank you for coming and thank you for you know taking the time and energy to put into yourself because I do this because I just enjoy you know, or putting on events and, you know, and keeping busy. But to see that, I'm like, wow, you did that for yourself. I said, I just, I just set the stage. You performed, you, you brought down the house. So this, this, this is not your full-time thing. You're still a full-time. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a teacher. teacher. Uh, I think that's part of the reason why it works is because I'm. Uh, oh, uh, of course summers. you got the whole summer off. Which it works out really well to have events later in the summer because it uh, gives me a lot more time to uh, prepare. Although it never fun. seems like there's enough. But <laughs> Enjoy it, yeah. your summer. Exactly. And that's, a, you know, I, I do a combination of, you know, organizing the events. I participate in, you know, events myself. And um, I'm always willing to try something new. But the triathlons, uh, I've been liking it. It's uh, uh, just been great for the body in my opinion opinion i can you know the cross training uh it works out pretty well and you know this way i get to do a little bit of of each of the segments of it throughout you know the year or throughout the season and i think the nice part about the actual triathlon itself it's just it's some sort of a checkpoint um you know uh i i encourage people to do it well it shouldn't be a bucket list i have some people do like yeah i'm gonna check it off i'm like no, no you can swim bike and run for the rest of your life i said you don't have to be really competitive i said but you know maybe pick an event every every summer to to do try different yeah. ones i i people are amazed i i am like yeah go try someone else's event i mean if you well, want to come you back know what? It, it amazes me like i find that if somebody's going to get if somebody's deciding to get healthy or mm-hmm. it's an automatic like triathlon or a marathon like, you know, yeah. something huge. I'm like, yeah. why don't you work your way up to something? You know, like there's so many years of, you know, getting better instead of like shocking your body and having to do all this training for one event. And then, and you then know, you have this then, big come down. Yeah. And then you, then what are you going to do? Right. Instead of like easing into it, um, enjoying something easier, not stressing yourself out and all this training you now have to do that you've never done in your life oh like yeah it's it, a shock to the system and i i'm yeah. sure you uh do your training or just not even so much call it training but you ride your bike with other people you know socialize turn into you know it doesn't have to be i mean i know when i trained for iron man I, I did all my biking and all my running pretty much by myself those were some long lonely days yeah <laughs> you know but now I'm part of, you know, running groups and uh, biking groups and swimming and triathlon groups. And, uh, you know, um, some people are hardcore. They're, you know, just out to, you know, do their I mean, best. I need one of those rides every once in a while. Yeah. Where you go but for the most part, I'm like, no, like, can we not like bike to a donut shop? I was like, can we, can we, like, is there not a... <laughs> I know. It's like, why do we always have to stop in between? How about at the end? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's things like that, that, you know, make it fun, make it, you know, it's, it, if you're not enjoying it, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. But I think that there's ways of making it enjoyable, uh, making it a family effort. You know, um, I try to get encourage my girls to get out there and, uh, you know, swim, bike and run and, you know, just what they can, but I said, enjoy it. I said, there, it goes back to the whole idea, swimming, biking and running are three things we all learn to do as kids. And, 
there's no reason why they shouldn't be a lifelong activity. Include your family and friends. I mean, it, that, that seems to be a really fun one is to, uh, you know, get out there with other people and enjoying it because then it, it builds. When you're just doing it yourself, you kind of question it. But when you see other people like, wow, everybody's so happy and they want to be a part of it. They're all different. Yeah, exactly. And it's it all, and that's the beauty of it too, with the triathlon, you know, people have said like, well, you know, you have to have a certain um, body size or image. Um, no, by all means. And, and, you know, we get anybody uh, and everyone that uh, comes out and there's not one size fits all. Um, and the people that participate, um, you know, they, they, they just appreciate the fact that they're welcome. Uh, they really like that because sadly, that doesn't always happen to people. You, you know, you don't always feel like you're welcome for whatever reason it may be. And, um, you know, I, I know I can get better with that, but I'd like to think that I'm trying to create a welcoming uh, and inclusive environment. And I want to keep growing with that because uh, when you feel welcome, you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I know. I get that same thing from my ladies at our club. And I, and I, you know, I work very, and like you, work very hard to always have that um, inclusive, um, environment, you know, like everybody's not non-judgmental. We're here to have fun. And if there's somebody rocking the boat, then they're sometimes left asked to leave, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we've had to do that and it, it actually, uh, clears the air quite a bit, a uh, surprising, you know, cause there's, I'll just give you a little bit and then we can, no, go ahead. you know, but, but there's this one lady who just, I don't know for what reason would just, you know, slam all my comments and like, just, just really rude to me. Um, we used to be friends and then, um, and then I, I let it go for a year and I'm like, I can't do this. I have to tell someone. So I like, cause I'm, Hopefully you told her. <laughs> no, I didn't tell her, <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it would have mattered. She would have you know, it was just like that. And, uh, but I told my board members, I'm like, girls, like, I, I, I have to tell you this. I, this is how I feel about this person. They're like, oh my God, me too. I'm like, what? I'm like, and she had made other people feel like that too. I was like, you, like, aren't you guys friends? She's like, no. She's like, blah, blah. And, and I was just like, wow, what, what, why did I, why did I wait so long and, and cause so much anxiety inside myself? I think like, you nailed it with that. That's what it really is. is. It's, you, you uh, start, you start internalizing and you feel badly and yeah. it, it, it's, it happens all the time with things. So it's, uh, it's one of those ones that, but you know, triathlon cycling, just life in general, it's surround yourself with the people that you feel good about that you want to be a part of and know that you know it that your group may change you know it's it, it's something you like today may not like or something you know you didn't but the idea is that you're kind of saying this is the person i am this is what i want to do and we create um, the atmosphere and you're going to bring the same type people into yeah and sometimes you need to get checked yourself i mean i i know <laughs> there's been lots of times where i'm like okay like okay yes i was like why why did i say that why why did i do that um, and hopes uh, of making amends for it. Um, and I've had people question, you know, even my events, like, well, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Um, it's like, well, I took a chance on it. Um, some things were going to. I've had some people ask, like, can we get rid of this this whole mini sprint? You know, it's just beneath us. I'm like, no, it's <laughs> like, this is what we want to do. I, I, you know, and here's a funny one. We actually, with our um, elites, um, we, ha we have had some of the top uh, triathletes in the state, if not the country, participate in our event. Um, but I actually have discouraged them. Uh, I asked them instead, I said, how about you come out and volunteer? I said, that would have a lasting impact on our uh, participants to see the top people giving back to the, the community. And we've actually offered an incentive uh, where up to, uh, I would uh, pay for a race entry up to $100 for any of the elites. I said, hey, if you don't do my event, but you volunteer, I said, I'll pay for you to do another event. And they liked that because it was just, you know, you, not too many people are making a lot of money off a of triathlon. So they appreciated it. And I said, yeah, we don't, we don't need you to come in here and impress anybody. I said, but if you really want to impress them, I said, volunteer. I said, show them that you care and that it, it we're doing it for the whole community rather than just ourselves. And so we've had a few people take us up on that offer and it's been well received because I think it's, it sends that message of, 
giving back um, that we're, we're here for all of us um, from the person that crosses the finish line first to the person who finishes last. We usually have a team of people go out and join the last uh, person coming across the finish line. And we make sure that our award ceremony is right in front of the finish line. So when the people come across, they're still being cheered. Cause I've, you know, I learned very quickly. I think my first year we had our start, our finishing line and we had our award ceremony and they were hundreds of yards apart. And the person came across and like, nobody was over there. They were all at the awards. Oh. And so we changed <laughs> that. And it, it really helped because the, you know, um, the person who comes in first and the person who comes in uh, last, it's just a place but the feeling they get should still be the same. Yeah, I totally agree. So with that, on that note, um, Doobie, where can they find um, information on our events? Information sure. for registration. I imagine it's still open and will be open until it's full. Yeah. Yep. Uh, both of our, uh, the triathlons uh, can be found at uh, www.com hopkinsroyaltry.com and uh we have our, our events on there um you know we'd love to have people come out um uh, our we're fortunate with our one event it had it does sell out um on a regular basis we're hoping that we get that success with the women's one um you know but uh the bottom line is uh, there's lots of good events out there we're just hopefully one of or two of of many and uh, we try to encourage you know people to uh, try different events. Uh, if anything, just to try an event. You know that's what really comes down to. Um, you know it's not for everybody, but I think a lot of people once they do it, they're like, hey, you know this is kind of fun. It gave me a reason for my training rather than just you know doing it. Um, you know the joke is always for the new people that you know up until today you were just cross training. Now you'll be a triathlete, and that's really really the message is there's only. The three things you have to do to be a triathlete is to swim, bike, and run. There's no distance. It's doing all three events in the you know uh, same you know time frame is what makes you a triathlete. Um, you know beyond that, you know uh, it's it's a fun sport. I'm glad I got into it. Um, you know I'm not looking to go pro or be successful. Every once in a while I get on the podium for my age group, and I'm happy with that. Um, but really, I'm competing with myself, and I'm just uh, enjoying the camaraderie of the people I've gotten to meet over the years. So well, that's what it's all about, because you know you see the regulars every year, mm -hmm. and um, it's the same with cycling, cycling racing. You got the same crew that come out, and and hopefully you see new ones. But triathlon is way bigger than cycling. Uh, racing just because I mean you've done great things like that like that mini try so somebody is thinking about it come out experience it mm, for me mm, not for me um and they didn't um you know have to break the bank to do it exactly um and uh so I, I absolutely love that idea um so with thanks we're gonna thank all of our listeners here so don't forget to um uh, go and um Look up actually Hopkins Try and the four women triathlon is are both on Facebook. So make sure you go and follow them. Check them out. If you're in the area, do the event. Um, and also follow the uh, podcast on Seekers from the Saddle podcast on Instagram and myself, Sylvie Dow underscore cyclist. And we're going to thank you. Doobie for coming in and telling us like really sharing um some great events that um are in Minneapolis which is I don't think too far from me I'd have to check the the map but uh may yeah. involve a passport thank you so much <laughs> yeah yeah really uh, anyways thank you so much and thank you to our listeners have an amazing day and we'll see you on the next episode thanks Sylvie